What's up, everybody? It's your favorite owl's favorite nerd, Nightbird. I don't know, man. That's all I got today. And today we are looking at the Nightbird Takara Tomy Masterpiece. It's a reuse of the mold. RC on loan to me from John P. Shout out to him. The reason why we're starting with robot mode is because with RC, we started with alt mode. So now on the channel, you'll have both ways of seeing the transformation and that's how we'll move through it. But I don't want to take up a whole lot of time right now because she has a metric ton of accessories and I want to get to those. So, first and foremost, she comes with a ooh, face, and uh, I'm not crazy about it at all, and it's very weird. Uh, there's also a piece of paint missing on the eye there, which is unfortunate. She comes with a blaster. Uh, it is painted with a glossy black that does look good, and the sculpt is done well enough. I believe RC had the exact same gun, and I don't think RC's was painted if memory serves. The blaster she holds with no problem. It can also fit in her holster, and it can be stored underneath the vehicle mode using these tabs here to line up right up against the bottom of the vehicle. She also comes with a pistol. Once again, uh, nice sculpt work, fully painted with the little gold detail done on there as well. She'll hold the pistol, but it's not great, actually. It'll peg into her palm, but as you kind of go to wrap her fingers around it, it doesn't really work all that well. Um, it's funny because the pistol doesn't really do something else that we're going to talk about here in a bit either. Um, but, I mean, she can hold it like that, but it just looks like it's kind of floating in her hand. The moment that you try to kind of flex the fingers around it, it, it pops it out. It's hard to see, but that can store underneath here as well. It stores in this little pocket that you can kind of get a better idea of over here. She comes with two of these, like basically lightsabers. They are painted blue gloss down here at the bottom, and then there's a translucent plastic for the blades themselves. Uh, the whole thing is in this translucent plastic, but the blue paint is added, and the blades are also removable. She'll hold that just fine with a pig into her palm. You can also store this on the side of the vehicle on both sides. She comes with two of these as well, these swords. I think this was from a chug, if memory serves, just kind of upsized. Um, I could be wrong about that, but it does work fairly well. The translucent's a nice touch, and then the gold paint throughout, um, and then the handle obviously moves and collapses a bit. So yeah, she holds these pretty well. These can be plugged into vehicle mode as well, once again, by just going onto the side. She comes with two size. Once again, translucent plastic with the handle painted. Nice enough. The size can also be plugged into the hilt or handguard of the other swords, and there may be a ton of different configurations with all this stuff. Um, it seems to be pretty modular in that regard. She holds the size okay, but once again, as you start to bend her fingers around it, it, it tends to pop out this piece there. Th these hands are just not the best for holding. You know, these hands ain't meant for holding. That's not what they do. And one of these days, these hands will never grab a hold of you. And they will peg on to the side of, as, of the car as well. She comes with two throwing stars. I think that these are even painted as well. Um, with just a small tab on them. But pretty cool. And the throwing stars can be stored on the palm pegs of all of your melee weapons. And even your blaster. But not the pistol, oddly enough. And then she comes with three different blast effects. Um, all this purple translucent, uh, which I think is nice enough. The kind of short, stubby one uh, will be used with the pistol. It's like made for it. Whereas the other two will peg more into the blaster. Or not more, but more appropriately. And lastly, she comes with the holster. And even this is painted with a metallic fleck paint. Uh, looks quite good. The holster will peg onto the side of her hip. All right, so let's talk about the figure, shall we? And we'll start with the head sculpt, which I think looks pretty good. Bulbous, bulbous head. Got a little paint scratch there. The dome here does open up for transformation, but all of that is sculpted inside as well. And the same thing can kind of be said about that in there, which is a nice little touch. It is fully painted. Uh, it is a metallic paint, and it does look pretty good. Um, the silver looks good, the gray looks good, and then the purple is like a gloss, and the black is a gloss, and uh, they look okay. The thigh swivels on this thing are tight as a mother. All right, so the head itself is on a ball peg, and then it, this neck is on a cylinder, kind of acting as a hinge. 
Using both, you can get the head all the way up. Down, not so much because of the neck beard here. And then side to side is kind of fine and you can get a little bit of attitude in there as well, so no real issues. Shoulders are on disc hinges. You can get them all the way up and all the way around. We have a bicep swivel. We have a double jointed elbow that gets you the full range. We have a wrist swivel and a hinge. The fingers are on a base pin knuckle and the index finger shares that base pin knuckle and then has a secondary knuckle as well and the thumb is on a hinge. Whew. Decent sculpt work here for the chest. The arms look pretty good too. We're back out of taste. There is a waist swivel. I think it basically acts as a double ball peg inside of there, which is kind of interesting. The purple belt with the stars and stuff, that's all new molding. Works well enough. Um, we have the black drawers. They're painted nicely. We have these hips here that are not the best, but they get you out to there. Back out. And then... Forward is no real issue. It does lose the kind of integrity, which you can get out to 90 degrees. Back is kind of a non-point, um, which is okay. Uh, it's obviously, it's better to have it, but it's usually, an, you know, we don't really use that that form of articulation most of the time. Knee, it's, a, I guess, technically, dealt, no, it's basically acting on a disc hinge, so you get the full range. And uh, the knee pad, it sits between the two like sandwiches the two so it's pretty clever stuff there i like that a good bit actually and then we have the ankles which get your ankle tilt up down in a pretty significant rocker and then you have this thigh swivel that's at a cut joint the cut joints at an angle so that's a little strange as well um and then you know she's got all of this business going on on the back um not not the most elegant in that regard uh this she suffers from the same sort of uh, proportion issues that the RC suffers from. The chest is too low. Um, the, the, the body looks like, like the front of her body like sits offset from where her spine should be. Um, so little stuff like that, but we should have come to accept that if we're going to buy this because we should all know what the RC mold is by now, which is uh, not great. People have been saying that this carries it a little bit better. We'll talk about that in final thoughts. Size comparison wise, there she is next to an MP Seeker. So you know, I, I think that that is, uh, I think that's a fair size for her. I think that 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 works nicely in that regard. All right. So the the more challenging steps, and this actually this Decepticon symbol can be flipped if that's a big deal for you. Um, it's not a big deal for me, but it can be flipped. So the the beginning portion of this is the most challenging. Um, not to say that it's super challenging, but it is what it is. So separate, you can untab this chest piece and just get that piece out of the way and get this lower piece down. And now what has to happen is this translucent piece of plastic has to go through both sets of rails here. So get it out a little bit spin it and just try your best oh lord there once you got it you got it form that up and then take the head, open up the top of it, pull your fenders out, pull your wheels out. You can go ahead and open these pieces as well. And flip this up and underneath so that it forms the front of the vehicle. Palms up on both sides, collapse, and then rotate the elbows so that they're up, bring up the hood of the car, and sit them tightly against the side of the head, as you can see. Ankles down, toes down, ankles down, toes down. Rotate 
her legs up and as you do so when you bend around the hip it'll separate it kind of you know from the, the thigh proper so once again up and then as we come around the hip you know we can kind of get those down then get those up in here and you want to close these flaps here at the top around it bring these side pieces out and down you can extend or flip down the wheels you can get these pieces up slide them over and then collapse them back down on both sides up slide them over collapse them back down and then you can flip this piece up and this will all start to form the the rear of the vehicle and then inside here are the back of the seats you don't want to forget to flip those down and collapse it on to the back here <clears throat> at which point we just take these double hinge down down this piece flips and then these tabs tuck into both sides same for this side down down flip spin and these tabs tuck in to both sides i'll clean it up and we'll take a look at it and there it is and i think it does a pretty good job um i was having a little bit of a conversation on patreon about how i think that we're a bit forgiving of alt modes and how alt modes look for characters that don't really necessarily have like a, a you know like a locked in your mind as far as canon goes with their alt mode so um i think that that certainly helps it but nonetheless i think that the colors work well and they pop well the translucent yellow is a nice touch um or the like neon green it does roll uh it's just struggling a bit against my my uh base here um Decepticon symbol comes through nicely. The gray paint comes through very nicely. And then, uh, yeah, all this, I mean, you know, it's a mess underneath, but they usually are, aren't they? Aren't RC they? Uh, I feel like that joke didn't land the way I wanted it to. Uh, the gold in the back looks pretty good. Yeah, no issues. And there it is next to Tiger Tracks. So about the same size as a Masterpiece car, which I think is right. Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives. And the truth is, is that it's just not a great design. It, it it doesn't really work any better for her than it does for RC, in my opinion. I think that people just have a stronger connection to RC, so they want it to be perfect. Whereas people know this character and they're familiar with this character, but they don't care about this character in the same way. So they don't really mind that it doesn't look as good as they would like it to because they don't really have a whole bunch of expectations for it to look like in the first place. They don't care. Not in the same way they care about RC. So I think people are like, you know, this is better. And, and maybe it is because it's painted the weapons are painted I feel like more care went into it but I don't think that the mold is any more successful with this than any other rendition I think that it's it's not a great design why the backpack is a complete mess the legs are awkward portionately the breasts are too low the body sits off centered from the spine even though there's tons of articulation built into it it's still kind of hard to make it look cool and whereas Takara it usually has some pretty interesting and fascinating engineering regarding the transformation the way that the backpack kind of works is the same as RC it just just seems lazy and uninspired with things not really being super secure the way you would necessarily want them to be or expect them to be given the company positives wise she comes with a ton of accessories and they all integrate well in interesting ways and they're kind of modular and they're kind of fun to mess around with everything is painted beautifully here top to bottom and a lot of the sculpt work is good the line work in the arms the line work in the neck and in the face and such all of that stuff works really well god bless this thing also the materials are pretty good i you know i used to feel like takara was sort of unmatched in the material realm for quite some time then other companies kind of started stepping up and I feel like Takara started slipping but this feels very good uh, I feel like a lot of their Beast Wars stuff has felt better than a lot of their G1 stuff this one feels 
much more in line with the quality standard that I'm used to with them. And that's about it. So I would say that if, you, if you're okay with the way this thing looks, I guess pick it up. I'm not crazy about it. I don't like the way it looks at all. I'm pretty much a firm believer that it doesn't lend itself to this mold any better. It's just that we don't care about this character as much because it still looks doofy to me. Hate to say it. But to be fair, that is a subjective criticism. So you may have a totally different feeling and that's okay too. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.